let us create an instance of Curator console in Azure. So I'm logging into my Azure portal, going to Marketplace, Azure Marketplace, and I'm going to search for Curator. So I type here, I click here, and type Curator. And I get the Curator, bring your own license, get it now. And I have two options, the console, which is what we're going to be doing, or a managed host, which I did another video for that one as well. So when I click here, I get asked several, you know, get some description in here. And when I click create, I'm going to be asked for the first thing is the resource group. I can create a resource group. Oops, I wasn't typing. And this, this will be your name, whatever name it is, the resource group you use in your enterprise. Virtual machine name, I'm going to call it uh, Curator a command in Azure first try. The number has, un has to be unique. No requirements on infrastructure, and I'm keeping the default is region. That's the name of the console. I can put more uh, CPUs and more memory. Probably 32 might be a little on the little side. The more resources you put he here, not only your curator will perform better, but also you will get uh, a faster deployment. Here, I'm going to put the username. And here I'm going to paste the SSH key. Uh, in the video description, I put a link to a another video where I generated a public-private key pair using PuttyGen. So in fact, I'm, I'm going to grab the private key from it. And I want to highlight something that can be potentially confusing. So I'm going to load the private key. And I'm going to grab the public key that I'm going to put here on the website. And resist the temptation of opening the public key with Notepad and, um, and try to copy it from there. If you do it like that, you're going to get some comments that are, are going to confuse, it's going to make the whole process invalid. That comment line is should not be there. So it is best to actually take it from here. OK, so now you have the public key that you're going to place here. And you, when you SSH into the curator box, you need to prove that you have the private key that matches this one. In terms of this space, and keeping this to one terabyte, this is a, a, just a demo. On the networking side, two important things. First of all, on the public IP, by default, Azure gives dynamic IPs. You don't want that. Curator console doesn't like the, ad the IP address to change. So you need to click here, static, and click OK. On the network security group, this is the firewall rules. Uh, if you click here, new, notice that you know you can, anyone can SSH into the box, and anyone who knows the IP address and has the private key can SSH in there. You may want to put some inbound rules that, for example, uh, you limit to the CDAR ranges of the of your IP addresses where you're going to be logging into. Curator. So I'm not going to change that right now. But 
and that's all I need to do here on the management and taking all the defaults guest config all the default tags all the default and now this thing is gonna validate that all the information that I put is okay and I'm gonna click create and this is gonna start deploying the QRadar console and you see this timer in here uh, I'm gonna pause the video until it finishes doing all the deployment by the way while that process is running uh, it is good to mention that the documentation for this if you google these words in here you get to this page and uh, basically we have done all these steps and we are going to issue this command once we are able to SSH into the appliance once it's finished uh, uh, its uh, deployment. It's one minute, so I'm going to pause the video again. Well, that was actually pretty quick, just two minutes. Click go to resource to get the IP that we're going to use to SSH into the box. So we click here and it's now in the clipboard. We actually go into the PuTTY machine, into the Windows machine where I installed PuTTY and again the, the, there was a link on the video description that show how I did that. Let me actually go into standard PuTTY. I paste the IP address of the actual box that we just copy. I need to load the private key. Uh, well, actually, I need to go under SSH, Auth, and here's where I browse where I have the private key, which is here on the desktop. And I now can go to session. By the way, if you don't want to keep on doing this all the time, you can uh, save that uh, configuration, give it a name, and then you don't have to do all the, all those steps. So if I click open, let's see what happens. It needs to recognize that IP. So is that it? It says login as. Put the user ID, and this is case sensitive. Boom! We are logging with the uh, actual key. Now we need to, according to the instructions, we need to uh, do the auto install to actually generate the actual installation. Uh, this is doing all that actually this is even a lot easier than doing it uh, on, a, on a local system so I'm going to pause the video until this uh, gets finishes or gets to an interesting uh, point well that took a while but it did the whole thing automatically so now it's asking for the actual console the, the, the browser console so I'm going to specify the password for that Okay, we are done. Well, let us test this out. We paste the curator, the IP address here. Hit enter. <laughs> there we are. Okay, it's asking to 
you know, it's a temporary license because I need to upload the actual license key and boom, there we have it that's the offensive step that's our first instance my first instance of Curator console on Azure.